Hey PC Gamers and welcome back to the PC Gamer Chat Log. I am Lauren Morton. And hey everyone, I'm Molly Taylor. And this week Molly and I are bringing on our staff writer Morgan Park to talk about all three of our favorite genres and how to get started in them. Like, yeah. I, I was just thinking recently about like the act we all have of recommending games to each other and trying to entice each other into playing things, especially as like we're in the second half of the year. We're going to be thinking about award season. And so we're all going to be having this battle with each other as well of like trying to ramp up like you should try this thing that I love. And sometimes you're like, it's like it's the pinnacle of the genre. It's for even people who don't normally play these types of games. And other times it's more niche and you need to sell a little bit harder. So I was just thinking about like all of the different like people recommending games to each other, like on social media or books or TV shows or anything. And like there's always this concept of like how to get started with this thing that you've seen from afar and you want to get into it. So we're going to be talking about, you know, Molly's rhythm games and fighting games. Morgan is yeah. our FPS and all of its sub genres expert. I am our cozy crafting all of that type of stuff uh, enjoyer. So we're going to be talking about kind of where to get started with all those things if you're coming from like not if you don't have any background in gaming whatsoever, that's a different conversation. But if you're coming from different genres within gaming and you want to try something new, uh, we're going to have a, a sort of a rec list exchange for that. But before we get Morgan, Molly, what have you been playing? Yeah, so I didn't I didn't play a whole lot last week. Uh, I had a bit of a busy week, so I didn't really play too much. But I did get time to dive in a little bit to the new Savage Raids that released in Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, yeah, you talked about this last yeah, week. Yeah, the second hardest difficulty in the game. I got a chance to do a little bit of it. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's I've been away from the game, I think I said last week, I've been away from the game for two years. Uh, this has been a really good Savage tier to come back to. It's a little, it's a little simpler, you know, it's doesn't require like perfection <laughs> um, <laughs> which you know some previous tiers may have needed a little more in terms of like dps checks or like mechanical execution it's a little easier mm -hmm. this tier which has been perfect for me it's been the perfect tier to get back in on uh i haven't finished it yet like i said i didn't play too much last week so I haven't finished it yet, but I'm hoping, you know, in the next couple of weeks that I can maybe, maybe finish it. Uh, but re-clears are also a thing that you have to contend with. Every single week you have to re-clear the raids that you've already done. So what? that is, yeah, so that's also like a thing to contend with. Uh, I haven't done them yet as of recording this. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, just a little bit of Savage Raiding in Final Fantasy XIV. That is pretty much all I did, to be honest. Well, that was your goal. Like when you talked about it last week, you're like, I want to complete the whole tier of Savage Raids this time. The whole for the first time, right? Yeah. For the first time. I've never, I've only ever done the first two fights of a mm. of a tier i normally give up pretty early on uh or like time <laughs> commitments you know it's 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 mentally grueling if you don't have a static which i don't have a static so i have to find seven other strangers every single who are on the same page as me every single time and nine times out of ten they say they're on the same page as you and they're not they're so not. Yeah, that that it's very it's very mentally grueling going through that process mm -hmm. for like four fights. Um, so yeah, I normally give up pretty pretty early on, but I'm determined this time. And because the tier is a little bit easier as well, so I'm hoping that this time next week I can come back and say I cleared it. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing kind of more of the same as I've been doing for the last couple of weeks as well. I had talked about The Sims 3 last week, I think, and how I was getting into playing some live mode in The Sims 3 and how that was surprising to me because I don't really do live mode Sims 4. I don't really like playing with my Sims, uh, but I've enjoyed it in Sims 3. It's kind of goofy. Um, and so far it's holding up to me continuing to play it for a few different weeks. Uh, and it, it is also holding up on like the build mode side of, I'm sure I talked about this last week and I don't recall in what depth, but I just continue doing a little bit of side by side, like 
taking some like inspo picks I've had and like tried to build them in Sims 4 and then now going back to those same pictures and trying to like come up with something in the Sims 3 and there are trade-offs in like the amount of oh I did talk about this because I was joking about countertops anyway it continues to be true that like having access to the creative style tool makes me feel so much more empowered to make what I want than the many 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 swatches of the Sims 4 like and the many like different physical styles of objects like having the ability to customize like whether something is metallic or if it's uh you know plastic or if it's tile or if like whatever is going on with every single object I just feel so much more like invested so that's going really well and then I'm back into playing or you know continuing to be into playing sky children of the light as well um we're on to a new season for several for a couple months uh a music themed season which is nice and they've got their um their own like little olympic themed event going on for a couple weeks right now where they've got some some new olympics themed outfits and there's like a torch uh object that you can earn too i really want the torch um and uh there's like little pvp mini games too and like teams you have like you get assigned to a team i haven't paid attention close enough to like exactly how the like the system and the competition is meant to work but i keep logging in and you're like you know uh you're competing with like a couple other players on like collecting the most like little light in like a little flying course or like doing some other uh platforming course and so that's been fun there's not been a lot of like PV- it doesn't really have pvp it's like not that kind of game or kind of mmo but they've had like some more recent dabbling in that area some like race type activities that yeah. have been fun and it's very like you get credit for participating because that's the kind of game it is like if you show <laughs> up and you participate like you're getting the currency but i'm sure there will be uh you know some some fun things around whatever team like technically wins in the end but that's been really cute while that goes on so that's what I've been up to. Let's go grab Morgan and talk about some game recommendations. Okay, Morgan, we'll start with you then and one of your categories because we brought you on as usual to be like the balance to Molly and I's like star chart, basically. We're like, who do we need to have the best coverage of like things that Molly and I don't play? It's Morgan. We need Morgan here. Tell us how to get into multiplayer first person shooters. That's, that is your area of, of expertise for us. I consider, even as someone who plays multiplayer FPSs, I consider them right up there with uh, MOBAs as, like, the hardest games to get into. Really? Um, yeah. You know, that's just my personal call. I've never been able to get into MOBA. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of that has to do with the communities. Um, you know, you could you could really extrapolate this to any multiplayer genre. Um, mm-hmm. But there's something about shooters and MOBAs and and we'll stick to shooters here that just inspire the worst possible impressions. Um, Because, you know, even if you're a straight white guy like me, if you hop into a shooter and you are bad at it, uh, you're going to hear about it maybe from from some other people on your team or on the other team. And it can be super demoralized. And so with, and I think Molly, you'll bring this up too, with any multiplayer shooter or multiplayer anything, the best possible way to get into it, number one most important thing is to play with friends. Um, yeah. Take your you friends know, to the pickup game. Don't go yeah. alone. Don't queue solo. <laughs> Extra bonus points if you have a friend who's already into the game, because then they can act as a Sherpa to like not only show you the ropes, but like literally communicate what is so great about this game and like help you see it through the lens that they do. Um, I've, I've Definitely been able to get some friends into my favorite games this way, like Rainbow Six or Hunt Showdown, and even Halo, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's that's like really key, and it's not it's not something you can just go do. You can't just like you know have friends who are interested in this <laughs> stuff automatically. Um, but seek that stuff out, and you know if you really need to go in alone and, and test the waters, you know try to look for the people, which maybe strike up a an online friendship with someone who isn't a the jerk uh and like you know kind of just no matter what shooter it is you're gonna have a better time with the friend uh but you know as far as the mechanics of the games i would say depending on what 
type of shooter it is. You want to pick like a role, pick a gun, pick a character you just think you know is cool, um, and then just kind of stick with that. Um, you know, there's a good chance if you're pop jumping into one of these popular shooters, it'll have like heroes or it'll have uh, like very specific you know loadouts you, you stick to. Like yeah, it's it's good when you're learning one of these really complicated games to just sort of pick something to stick with. I bet Molly will have similar advice for for fighting games because those are even more complex. Uh, but I think one other thing that like isn't really such obvious advice is to maybe if you're not a shirt person, start with a single player game. Uh, like, you know, Interesting. yeah, I think maybe the best single player FPS that might like get you acquainted with, I don't know, just whipping your camera around and trying to get headshots is like doom or even like one of the older oh, sure, Titan yeah. Falls or, or even a given Call of Duty campaign. Um, like there is something to be said for just like getting used to the mechanics of, of shooters that way or like getting back into them if it's been a long time. I don't know if you if you folks have any experience with that. I feel like, you know, I don't play many FPS games, but like back in the day, probably the first one, it was probably Halo 3 for me. And I probably got into it, I think, because I had friends that were into playing Halo 3 on consoles. And like, as you say, having friends, Morgan, is the way to do it. Like getting into a, a group matchmaking, matchmaking situation because, you know, they've never been my strong suit. They weren't back then. They still aren't now. So I have friends to either carry me or just laugh about, like, even if I don't improve <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know about you, yeah. Molly. I think that's definitely the thing is is friends, right? Like, I'm kind of in this weird position where I really want to get into Valorant. I want to be one of the Valorant girlies. I do not have experience with like tactical FPSs, which I think I would put Valorant into. Right? It's more of like a tactical FPS. I don't really For have sure, any yeah. experience with that. Yeah, and the the biggest problem is trying to find friends who also play it because i think especially with, with tactical fps is like more so than i find with like a game like overwatch or with call of duty is like having map knowledge and hero knowledge i feel like it's so important and i do feel a little intimidated by it but when i got into overwatch i think what helped me with with that that was like the first shooter i ever really like played like multiplayer shooter I think it helped that I played it on release <laughs> for starters, which obviously is not really uh, a luxury that you can really have with a lot of these big shooters now. But it also helped, again, that I was playing with a couple of friends. I was playing with people that also wanted to play Overwatch. And also I was younger and I didn't really care as much. I think that's another thing <laughs> is like not caring what other people think when you start, which is difficult, right? But I think especially when I'm starting a new online game, if I can turn off the chat, if I can turn off like voice chat, text chat, like when I'm starting, when I'm learning something, that I will do that. I will turn off voice chat. I will turn off text chat because I don't need to know what other people <laughs> are trying to say about me when I'm learning something, yeah. right? I almost included that as, as one of the suggestions. Like I have, I think I have like enemy chat turned off in Overwatch and Rainbow Six, like, it's not that, you know, it's not that it's always so bad. It's just that I just it's get a little distracting or yeah, yeah, demoralizing, like you said. I get a, yeah, I just get deflated when like the mood of a lobby completely changes because some guy wants to be a jerk. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, you'll have, you know, people who play these games every day will just tell you to to, to thicken your skin and, and, and ignore it. But like, it sucks, you know, you just don't want to let someone like be a jerk and just get away with it. So you like, I want to argue with them or try to ignore it. It's just better to just like cut that off. So which actual games, Morgan, do you think are the best to start with if you're coming to the the multiplayer FPS space from uh, from elsewhere? Yeah, there's a reason Overwatch 2 has, has a uh, uh, reputation of being so accessible. It still is quite accessible, even with all of its changes. That's one of the first ones I would recommend. Um, if you have friends to to play it with, right? Like, <laughs> if you it, have friends, it, yeah. If you have friends to play with, I think Overwatch is pretty hard to enjoy on your own. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have friends, Overwatch Two is like hop in, try a character. Like, you know, there's characters that really deprioritize aiming. 
Uh, you, can, you can go far with uh, characters like Moira and the, the Mercy or uh, mm -hmm. May. But, uh, you know, yeah, that's a great team game. Uh, you know, personally, the past year or so, my favorite playing alone game has been Halo Infinite. Um, because it's not so much a competitive game. It's not that much about teamwork. It's way more individualistic. You can just go out there and enjoy like it's sandbox of weapons and vehicles and just and just play casual matches and it's super fun uh, that yeah like recently i haven't had a ton of friends interested in playing shooters so i've just been playing them alone mostly and yeah halo infinite's been really great for that um and then like to broaden it a little bit you know there's also extraction shooters the best one i think is hunt showdown that one can be fun alone or it can be fun in a trio um, but it's also very tough. It's very unique. It's definitely not a beginner game. Uh, but if you just like simply like the idea of a wild west FPS where most of the guns are just these like single shot, you no know, six shooters and lever action rifles, that, that game is unbeatable. Uh, and then like even one more step up, I think like the super, my super tactical 5v5 round based FPS of choice is always going to be Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, because it's a bit like Valorant and CS in terms of intensity, uh, but it's a bit, there's also just these loads of gadgets that can like alter the environment and like give you advantages and intelligence that uh, make it not so much about your aim skill all the time. You can, you can go far in that game just by being the person who calls out where people are because you're looking on drones or cameras, and that's, that can be really fun for teamwork. It's kind of nothing else like it. While we're talking about competitive stuff, Molly, do you want to get into fighting games? Yeah. Do I want to get into fighting games? No. It's too no, late. You are into fighting games. <laughs> Regrettably, yes. Uh, I am into fighting games. It's one of my one of my genres, as anyone who has listened to this podcast before will know. Uh, and honestly, yeah, like listening to you, Morgan, something that has surprised me is just how similar uh like the kind of advice is so yeah for starters have friends like for me personally you don't you don't necessarily need friends for fighting games but for me i found that my journey started accelerating so much more rapidly when i had friends to learn with friends to like spar with you know people that i could people who were better than me as well so i could ask them a question very easily and they could kind of relay it to me and like kind of they could like tell me in like more layman terms than if I was looking online and it was like oh yeah this move is like 10 frames and you need to like don't make sure you don't whiff and fuzzy and blah 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 and I'm like oh my god what the hell does that mean <laughs> <laughs> so you know like but just in general having friends who are like into fighting games or want to get into fighting games for me take some of the salt out of the process as well you know if i'm like trying to learn by playing people in ranked and i'm getting like mad about it i can just go play with some friends and it's not as high pressure right so yeah have friends sorry if you're already <laughs> if you already don't have that stuff but at least try try and have friends and then well i, I would love to add just that I, I think a beautiful part of fighting games uh is that if you don't have friends that are into them, uh, you can still get a lot out of it on your own. Like, yes, yeah. the I love that at its even at its highest competition, it's one on one. Uh, yeah. So you could you could be awful. You could be like whatever bottom bronze or whatever in Street Fighter Six, like I was. Uh, but you could still like that's 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 just for you. That's your information. No one else needs to know. You're not <laughs> you're not you're not letting an entire team. You're not inspiring people to write 300 words about how trash you are in chat you are it's just it, if, if it's not going well at least you're the only one affected and that's like yeah. kind of just your just for you you're only inspiring people to write 3,000 words about how trash you are if you're winning against them and yeah then, exactly. and then <laughs> that's when you get the essay on how dog shit you are even though you just beat them so yeah like <laughs> it is it is one of those games that you well, one of those genres, sorry, that you can still really enjoy if you are on your own. I personally, for me, I found the experience 
a lot better with friends but it, like you say morgan ultimately it's a it's a 1v1 game like 95 percent of the time you have some like tag team games or modes but ultimately pretty much everything is 1v1 right so it is a, it's a it's a genre that is enjoyable alone yeah like like no two fighting games are the same either right there's there's transferable skills there's things you know that you well yeah there's transferable skills there's transferable skills but every game plays slightly differently it has slightly different nuances it might have you know some fighting games you just hold back to block and some fighting games you have to press a specific button to block like there's different types of how each mechanic works so try them all right like i don't i don't really mess with like 2d fighters i played street fighter 6 for a while couldn't really get into that beyond like a casual level i am trying to get into guilty gears drive but 2d fighters just don't mesh in my brain the way that 3d fighters do i love tekken i play a lot of tekken 3D fighters, yes, absolutely. But you might find it's the other way around. You might find that you really enjoy 2D fighters. You might really enjoy like arena fighters, which are a little more niche. Or you might find you really enjoy platform fighters like uh, Rivals of Ether. Or there's another one, Brawlhalla, I think, is also a platform fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you there's so many different like sub genres within that, like shooters as well, right? Like how you got extraction, tactical, hero shooter, like it's the same with fighting games and they all play slightly differently and you might find that you mesh with one or the other how do you how do you know molly like if i'm coming to fighting games and you know i never will but like 2d (laughs) versus 3d if you're like if you like this kind of thing it's probably going to be 2d for you versus 3d do you know what that's a that's a good question i i don't know because what are the real differences? I know that's like sidestepping, right? You can sidestep yeah, so like, sort of back and forth. Yeah, so, you know, in Tekken, you have, obviously, moves are sidesteppable. Uh, Tekken, for me personally as well, it's a the execution is a little higher, I find. And then you'll have, like, Street Fighter and Guilty Gear Strive, where it's, obviously, you can't sidestep because it's a 2D game, right? maybe some of the inputs are a little more simple like guilty gears inputs are simpler but it still has a high level of execution and you know there's like jumping and air dashing and air dashing does not exist in tekken right but air dashing is quite big in a lot of anime uh fighters Mm -hmm. so it's it's and like dragon ball fighters as well dragon ball fighters has a really really easy uh really easy inputs like input system but again it's a lot of execution and you also have to learn three characters in that game because it's a 3v3 so it's it's vibes i think i think you just have to like play a few and just kind of you know like a toddler like try putting like the square block try finding like the square hole and just seeing like if it feels good and if you're like having fun i think picking a game that you like based off like the aesthetics as well is always a thing and especially with characters as well that is one thing i'll always say about characters is pick who you think looks cool don't pick who you think is the (laughs) strongest or pick who you think is like gonna make you win more pick who you like pick who you enjoy pick who you like the look of if you like their vibes if you like their voice actor their costume their like theme like anything like that if you go this person looks cool like try them out try them out and then if you don't like them to play them pick someone else you like the look of and then and then look up combos and then do all like the hard stuff after that and then jump into ranked and then you know kind of build you can get attached to and not sick of Yeah, yeah exactly like don't don't like when you're competitive when you're like a pro obviously picking characters who are maybe a little stronger is important when you're just trying to play for fun Mm -hmm. pick for fun right you don't have to pick the strongest because picking like a top tier character is not necessarily going to make sure that you win right so yeah like i I I played like 30 hours of street fighter 6 last year is probably my first proper fighting game um i play one character the whole time just just zangief just yeah. uh 
was really drawn to, first of all, it is uh, facial hair, but second of all, <laughs> that he specializes in Krebs, um, mm-hmm. which are basically just, you know, quick moves you can pull off that just take a ton of health at once, like, right? So I was like, it was like the fewest number of moves I actually had to had to land to win a round, uh, which, which maybe made, made me a little bit basic, but it was like really fun. Um, if I could just get these certain grabs off, but I'd say maybe for recommendations personally, um, that Street Fighter Six modern controls mode is pretty incredible yes. for um, someone like me who's absolutely not interested in trying to learn quarter circle uh, moves on a on a joystick. I, I just won't ever do that. Not the quarter uh, circles. Yeah. What a yeah. mood. <laughs> but the modern controls, you know. I think there is some debate in the in the community, but like they're generally they make it easy to do all the important moves and then still give the classic control people a little bit of advantage with like more combos if they can if they know how to pull yeah. those off. But you can still be very competitive 100%. with really simple controls and and it's really fun. Yeah, I do really agree with that. Yeah, Street Fighter Six has probably like the most approachable. Uh, is probably one of the most approachable in terms of the fact that it does have the modern control scheme. Tekken 8 has something called special style, but it's nowhere near as uh, like involved as modern controls. It's very much just like, it's very, very, very basic and pared down in comparison. Whereas I think modern controls in Street Fighter 6, I think you can still do the movement input if you want to get like full damage. I think it has like the, the more simplistic version but then it still allows you for some stuff to do the classic movement input i think and still get the benefit from that so yeah yeah would definitely that's, recommend a, that. that's a good detail you pointed out you actually do a little bit less damage when you're on this easier controls mode um mm-hmm. it's just kind of interesting but i but i really like yeah it i climbed ranked a little bit here and there i felt like i was actually like part of the fighting game community there for a second uh despite <laughs> you know never having a joystick and just you know pulling off big big grabs with like one button okay i want to talk about a genre that you don't have to have friends for yeah sorry i'm done yapping (laughs) no no it's okay (laughs) okay. (laughs) you guys okay you guys both said that to get into fps's or fighting games it's best if you have friends look you know where you don't need friends is getting into farm sim type games like (laughs) all of the stardew valleys and like their subsequent like everything that's like that you can play solo that some of them have co-op and that's great too but really you can sink your 500 hours completely alone and feel great about it um and i i think some of the important things to remember as you're getting into those type of games are like the wiki is your friend like you yes. will need the wiki and you should not feel ashamed like like if you just have like the Stardew Valley wiki up and you're like, what gifts does so-and-so want or like grow time for X crop because you're like five days away from the end of the season and you don't want to plant a crop that's going to wither because it's going to be fall and then your tomatoes or whatever are going to go to waste. (laughs) You know, don't feel bad about looking up to make sure the grow time on those is five days and not like 18 days. Um, But yeah, that's, that's like slightly more advanced stuff, but between like <laughs> how, to how to get into farm well, sims how to get into open up 10 different spreadsheets <laughs> to optimize yes. your growing of crops <laughs> okay look i'm just saying that part comes later but when you are getting into it don't feel bad about using the wiki to like you know where's this person at what do they want um and then like build inspiration picks for sure is also a bit like a source of uh, motivation for me I guess mm-hmm. like a lot of games like have their own story like things to keep you going but like some of my favorite ones like Stardew have like really like, you have a lot of control over what like your farm property or like whatever operation you're running whether it's a farm or a graveyard because it's graveyard keeper or whatever else uh, you know you have a lot of control on where you put things and how you design it and like that can feel daunting and overwhelming at first you have a huge campus or canvas rather um and like looking at other people's stuff on like pinterest or like tiktok or whatever like oh yeah i want mine to look like that that really helps uh keep you invested um 
that is a pretty and, decent part of these part of these games. I will say, like yes. the aspirate the aspirational YouTuber is kind of something I forgot to mention. Even with shooters, you, it, sometimes you find like a, a sort of your YouTuber north star of like yeah. It's not, it's not like you want to do exactly what they're doing, but they kind of like exude to you what makes this game great. You uh, you want to like follow in their footsteps of like how they engage with it to always be having the most fun, right? Mm hmm. No, that's so true. Same with like all of the farm sim, like crafting type stuff is like, yeah, having people you can watch and be like, oh, I like what they did with that. And like, mm -hmm. even if you don't wind up with the exact same thing, it's true of like the sims and crafting survival stuff, which people do a lot of building in as well. Anything where you're doing a lot of building and it's like such an artistic activity, right? I feel like that's a huge part of the draw of like, especially the things that came after Stardew, like Harvest Moon and like the earlier era of farm sim type stuff have like a, a different set of motivations, like especially like the remaster for A Wonderful Life that came out and I played. It's like a totally different experience. It's like almost hard to recommend that to somebody who loves Stardew Valley because it's just, it's like, it's the same type of game. It, it's inspired by Harvest Moon, but like it's a different type of game also yeah. in a way. Um, and I do really feel that Stardew Valley is still the best place to start. That feels like a basic oh, answer. Yeah. And I wanted to come up with something different. I was looking at like our list of games like Stardew Valley that like I curate. And I was looking, I was like looking through the steam tags in my library of stuff with like that are farm sims or life sims trying to rack my brain. I'm like, is there a better place to start? I've played so many of these and truly Stardew is like still the best it's, place i think it's yeah. the best place to start and the best place to finish <laughs> yeah our it's chris livingston game. on our team just played stardew valley a few weeks ago for the first time and he's been which is crazy loving it, it i couldn't is. believe that i thought he was lying <laughs> i thought he was I surely chris had played he was, stardew valley i thought yeah i thought he was joking but yeah like i think something for me that i would say especially with stardew but with farm sims in general is like just definitely like use the wiki if you want to like if you need to like don't be afraid to use it but also don't be afraid to like not be just, optimal just yeah not be optimal because everyone always yes. says oh stardew valley make sure you complete the community center year one so that you can get the green that's hard to do you have to really which, focus to do that yeah which like don't stress about that if it's your yeah, first no. time playing don't stress about getting the community center done immediately. If you have to go winter without the greenhouse, like who cares? My first time playing Stardew Valley, I went winter without the greenhouse mm -hmm. and it was fine because you you still have- You learn to so engage many with the other systems. Things. Yeah, like there's so many different things, especially when you're starting out for the first time that you can experiment with and you can like try out. So that's like, second yeah. or third farm behavior. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I played <laughs> Stardew the, the, that first year it came out a few months in. And and yeah, I, I had no idea what was optimal. I, st I don't think I've ever even heard of the greenhouse. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, when winter came, I just became like a pro fisherman. I would just fucking wake up, yeah. immediately go to the ocean, either go all day, mines, make all... You fish, yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, 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 know, I know what Molly's getting at. Like, you, you can you sometimes even feel like judged for how you're playing the single player personal game even from afar just based on like what you see other people doing right there's such a there's such a culture of, of optimizing these games and like and for good reason like people find that really fun to just you know get this perfect machine going but yeah i really enjoyed stardew as a latch the days of like i don't even know what i'm gonna do the next day when i when i yeah. go to bed and you know I'm just gonna just gonna take a look around water water my stuff and i don't know maybe this is maybe this day is all for the mines even though that's not <laughs> technically what you should be doing to to make the most progress yeah like use other people for inspiration but don't like shame yourself in comparison to other people that you see for sure because yeah. then then you have lost the spirit you've lost the vibes don't do that to yourself um yeah, I think Stardew is the best place to start because it has the best customization as far as like your property is concerned and like the canvas that you have at your disposal. Because other things like I really like Roots of Pacha, the like amount of control you have over placement in the village of that one, not nearly like as as enjoyable as like what you can do in Stardew mm -hmm. Valley. Um, and I think it still has one of the best like multiple paths to like achieving what you need to do like you can be a fisher you can be a rancher you can be whatever else and those are all legitimate ways to like make income and make progress through like the story and other things expect you to sort of like follow the path it's setting for you a little bit more um 
you know, yeah. Lauren, Lauren, like if someone for some reason has already tried Stardew and it wasn't their thing, but they think they might still like these types of farming games, what are the best ones of those that aren't Stardew? Um, okay, I'd say actually the things I'll recommend are the things that I don't like because um, they're really <laughs> valid ones that a lot of other people do. Sunhaven. People really enjoy Sunhaven. Oh, yeah. I find it clunky. I don't like it. I couldn't get into it, but it has like, um, you have like supernatural creatures. You're like a, a fae or like a demon or like whatever else so, like you choose as your character. Um, and people really enjoy that one and like the little magic system that's in it. And people like wildflowers, W-Y-L-D-E flowers as well. Um, that one's about a witch. And I think she's like going to a town and like to help take care of her grandmother or something like that. Your 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 grandparent is not dead in that one, I don't think. Oh my God. Crazy. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, <laughs> spoilers for wildflowers. Uh, but that one has a more um, focused story. Like you're not creating a character and like doing the sandbox thing. I think it's a little bit more like focused and controlled. Like it has a narrative to it to focus you. Uh, so I didn't get into either of those personally, didn't really click with them. But I think so many other people do that if you're like, I Stardew didn't work for me, then I, I'm not the right person to listen to for like our tastes matching perfectly. So go try one of those other really popular ones that I think are popular for good reasons, probably. That's my cool. take. What about stealth games, Morgan? How do you get into stealth oh, yeah. games? Please, I would love to know this. <laughs> As a person, I I love stealth games in concept. In practice, I just can't seem to do it. Like Dishonored, Hitman, all those cool games that rely around stealth and stealth mechanics, can't do it. I'll stand, I'll sit in the same spot for like five minutes, just watching the pattern of an NPC that I need <laughs> to get past. And I'm just like, what? what am I doing? I'm so bored. So <laughs> help me, help That's me. That's funny. I, I was going to say, I, I definitely do the same thing. We're all staring. I'll we'll be staring at the same guards doing the same pattern for five minutes and not do anything. But it's not because I'm bored. It's because I'm like kind of terrified of, of making the first yeah. like actual risky move, you know? Um, and it's definitely a learning curve for these games, right? Like th these games sort of inspire people to take no risks, right? Because you want to just stay hidden. You want to stay in the shadows. And, um, but I think what the best stealth games these days pull off is, uh, like really delivering on, on that idea that so many games, uh, uh, talk about of just letting you play it how you want, um, or just like being really flexible, just having flexible systems. Uh, so like stealth games, I think like the, the North Star of what makes, of what helps me enjoy them. I, I think I like the role play of it a little bit. I like I like the idea of uh, uh, sort of like stalking a prey in a game, like 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 turning this sort of like me versus an enemy situation not into like just straight up fight, but like I actually have the advantage all the time because I'm because I see them before they see me, uh, and it's just like I think is just kind of really fun in these types of games. Like first thing I try to like encourage friends to do when I'm watching them play Dishonored or Hitman for the first time is to like actually try to stay hidden um and not just drop every single guard that you come across like right this, yeah yeah like i mean you can absolutely do that right like dishonored is, is very fun even if you're just like putting a, a crossbow bolt into the head of every guard um <laughs> but like you know i i go back to slightly older games like splinter cell splinter cell uh did made it kind of harder to drop guards without having consequences so you were encouraged to actually just sneak past them right and it's like the most terrifying thing in a stealth game is to sneak past a guard and then try to move on because now you have someone behind you who can see you as well like that's crazy like you don't want to deal with that just shoot them in the head um but these games <laughs> are a lot of, uh, go ahead with Lynn. hitman morgan you and i both played a lot of hitman and really mm -hmm. enjoyed it that's a thing that i think about with that is it gives you so many opportunities to stash bodies which like yeah. it's it's such a fun way it's great to like pick away at guards slowly and just like stash them but it does make that so easy to be the norm instead of like forcing you to make harder choices mm -hmm. yeah. about like who you want to like get rid of yeah so as far as like actually getting into these games i think the concept of having to make your own fun is something to confront if you haven't really had to do that in other games before um you know 
yeah, these are games that will let you make them very easy if you want to. But it's the it's it's actually like having desire to like set a set a small challenge for yourself that really makes them shine. Uh, yeah. Like in, in Dishonored, there's even a mode. You, there's a choice early on, or you can just not take the magical powers. Uh, you know, like that, that's a game where you, where you're supposed to play by blinking around, teleporting around at all times, and turning into rats and sneaking by people, or or you know, just doing crazy magical powers. But you can just forego all of that and and make it play like a, like a classic thief game where all you have is just a knife and, and agility, um, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, like I think. Number one recommendation is to play a, a newer stealth game because the old ones are rickety and hard to <laughs> yeah. appreciate nowadays. A very, very sacrilegious thing for a PC gamer to say, but like, I don't think your first stealth game should be uh, Thief, you know, the first Thief games or, or anything like that. Um, I would start with Dishonored. Uh, those are very, very great games. But honestly, I would start with Hitman before anything else because Hitman. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the ultimate stealth game, honestly. It's got, uh, it's got. You can put yourself into a situation where it becomes like a dishonored, right? Where you're crouching, you're taking cover, you're like breaking lines of sight, um, and you're taking guys out close up or or from range. Uh, but it has Hitman. Its most beautiful mechanic is social stealth. Uh, it is. It lets you hide in plain sight with disguises. It lets you, like, literally take as long as you want to to suss out an area and really learn it. Um, by giving you access to them, by you know becoming a guard or becoming a chef, and you can just sort of like, you you still get that fun role play sense of like I am, I am like the 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 top dog in this area, or like I'm here to do something, I'm here to do something wicked, you know. But I, but I'm just like, <laughs> I just look like this guy in a in a chef's hat. Uh, so I think like, someone who's never played a style of game, I would just put Hitman World of Assassination in front of it, in front of them, and. And let them uh, uh, mess with that. Uh, so you're and yeah, there's like stealth sandbox over stealth tactics for sure. Definitely. De yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's just my preference. I, I I like stealth action. I like you know my, some of my favorite games are like the old Splinter Cells and uh, MGS and Dishonored and Hitman nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I don't know if you I have think... a different different recommendations. I'd love to hear them. I think for for me. I, I have a follow-up question because you recommend Hitman. My problem with Hitman specifically is there are so many ways to like achieve the objective that I get like choice paralysis almost because I'm like, Ooh, I like don't know what I'm really supposed to use. Like you can use anything. You can like take someone out with like a packet of spaghetti if you wanted to. And I, and I just <laughs> like, and I think just having all that choice, like, almost turns me off playing it for some reason not because i don't want to but because i'm like i think again it's it's the min maxer in me right is yeah. like yeah. wanting to pick the best thing to use like what would you say for someone who maybe wants to play hitman like me but gets a bit overwhelmed by like how sandboxy it is for sure yeah uh i would say those all those all the missions have mission stories which are like these pretty linear paths of assassinating the targets that are kind of like meant they're kind of meant to be easy right like you you can if you turn on all the hints it's basically just like this linear like go here pick this up knock this guy out become this guy and it and it always ends on like these really satisfying sort of cinematic uh yeah. uh kills you know where you like you know f f make them fall off a building or shock them to death or do really wacky stuff uh which feeds into how hitman is like one of the funniest games in the world um is that true so of the whole I, World of Assassination trilogy, Morgan? Because I've only played three, yeah. and they have them. Okay, so the whole trilogy oh, yeah. has those. Mm -hmm. the, the mission stories, cool. That's right, yeah. So that's, like, the first thing you can do. You can just, like, follow those stories. The You know, that, that'll that that'll get you through the every level multiple times. Um, just doing sort of, like, you know, admittedly easy, right? Not really challenging, not really, like, the best of the man, if you ask me. But it introduces you to, like... It's kind of like trying to show you how you would find these sorts of kills yourself um, if yeah. you want to, you know, forego the vision stories the next time. But, like, to your comment about, like, wanting to find the most optimal way, like, yeah, you can do that in Hitman. And you can get a lot out of, like, trying to, you know, do things faster or, like, find, like, literally the fastest way to do stuff. But it really is a game that isn't, that can't really fully tapped without enjoying just setting 
boundaries for yourself, right? Like sometimes I'll just go into a mission and say like, I, I know that I want to use the statue that I know that, that can fall down. I don't know how to make it fall down, but I've, I know you can do it. So like whatever I end up doing, I just want to use the statue somehow. Uh, or like I'll go into a mission, you know, especially nowadays, Hitman has so many challenges built in. I'll just pick something from the list of challenges I haven't done that just says like, you know, assassinate someone with a rubber ducky. It's like, I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but I, I will dedicate. Is in this yeah, level. but I'll, I'll spend the next hour on this map. First of all, yeah, like Lauren says, trying to find the rubber ducky because the game won't tell you uh, and then figure out how to, how the hell you kill someone with it. Um, so like that, that's really like the, the extra layer of, of awesome in, in Hitman and why I consider it like probably the best modern stealth game. Uh, because yeah, it is a sandbox. It can be, it can definitely be overwhelming. But if you can jive with like getting into the challenges, like you can actually make it a pretty focused experience if you just sort of pick something off the list you want to do. And there's also in the last year or so they've added the freelancer mode, just kind of like this yeah. last big mode they added as like a farewell to Hitman because they're not going to make more Hitman for a long time. And Hitman or freelancer mode is definitely something you want to play once you know all the maps. But it's incredible. It's basically the road light uh, little campaign mode where you, where you start with like no equipment, right? Like you usually play those games and you go in with whatever equipment you want. This mode takes almost all the equipment away from you and makes you find it all on the map. Oh, and then wow. makes you survive these like, you know, sort of harder missions. And then you come back with whatever you, you basically like, it's like an attraction game. You like it's strapped from the map with whatever you found on that map yeah. and, and keep it for the next one. And you try to like keep doing that and not die. Uh, so that's like, that's kind of like the tip of the iceberg of, of, uh, of Hitman or like you know, kind of, or more like the pinnacle. Um, and it's really good. Like there's just, I don't have much bad to say about Hitman these days. It is, it has really grown into like this pretty remarkable stealth package. They're a lot of fun. Molly, tell us about rhythm games and how to get oh. into those. God. Okay. Ah. Uh... Yeah, this is like a, a tough one because I feel like rhythm games are like a such a good, it's such a fun genre. I feel like it's one of those that it's still kind of niche if you don't include Osu, right? Which is the one that everyone plays. But <laughs> I was yeah, I was I was like thinking about it because I was like I was like so many people I know used to play rhythm games like Guitar Hero, DJ Hero, like DDR in the old arcades. But I think because the western like western developers have like largely moved on from the genre at this point it is pretty much like a genre that is not exclusively but the big ones are, you know a lot of like japanese korean developed games which kind of means like by extension you have to be okay or at least kind of enjoy the music that comes with it you know <laughs> like right. it's very heavily rooted in like j-pop anime themes like edm that is very much like the direction that a lot of these go in you know i think some people maybe were used to like rock music or like especially like guitar hero people like right that that's kind of hard to find these days so first thing is to actually enjoy the music <laughs> like it sounds obvious but if you're not really a fan of the music that a lot of these rhythm games are using then you're not really going to enjoy yourself right i'd so never like, thought about that that that's like that's the catalog you have access to at this point yeah yeah like you don't really see a lot of like a ton of western developers doing rhythm games these days we did see we saw fortnite do fortnite festival uh which you know is not a rhythm game i would recommend getting into if you want to get into the genre <laughs> but you know it's there it exists you've got like friday night funkin as well which is again another one that i don't really recommend for the first time because the inputs are kind of weird and it doesn't play amazing i love the music in friday night funkin it does not play amazing so i think if it's like your first rhythm game if you want to pick something to get into Though I do not enjoy it, and I wouldn't normally recommend it, I would say go with Osu. But with like the very big caveat of researching and finding good charters slash mappers, right? Because Osu is community based. Osu is like it's all community charts, right? That it's not a developer. It's not professional charters. 
making these like doing these note maps it is community based uh so if you do want to go for osu because obviously it's free it's all community maps community songs you can just throw a bunch of stuff on there at least try and do some research on the charters first because there will be like well-known charters or like you know near professional charters doing work for for osu uh osu mania just, in particular go for it morgan sorry bali yeah just to paint the picture osu if, if you're picturing like guitar euro uh osu is different right that's yeah. these, these notes appear and and like with either a touch screen or a mouse you have to yeah. sort of drag them in the right direction right drag or sort of push them, them left yeah. to right up or down or like even make entire like circular shapes with the yeah, you with like the notes. tap or drag they do have other modes as well uh osu mania is one that i would probably recommend uh it's like you know standard ddr format you know up down left right uh if you're gonna go for osu mania i would just recommend step mania though personally but i'm biased because i grew up on <laughs> step mania which is also like a ddr kind of up down left right uh format so yeah if you want something free to try and get into rhythm games and you have like some choice then in like what songs you can pick but again it's very anime centric it's very like it's very, you know, J-pop, K-pop, anime, uh, Japanese EDM, like techno centric. Uh, yeah. If you're willing to spend a little bit of money, DJ Max is the game that I would absolutely recommend. It has a great variety of genres, which is kind of something that I really, really appreciate and something that I think other people would appreciate. It's not just, you know, one particular type of music that you're finding it is such a especially like the more recent packs that they're releasing much bigger variety of music so yeah just like pick pick songs that you like in osu in step mania do something free first pick songs you like from reputable charters see if you enjoy kind of just tapping your fingers along to the beat which i think a lot of people do i think people can really get behind rhythm games i think they're very fun especially when again you're enjoying the music right but yeah it's can you, and you I, have, i've uh, for, when it comes to dj max is that your like top recommendation i see it is yeah. like 50 50 on steam right so it's definitely a bit yeah. of a wait for sales these other ones. <laughs> yeah wait uh, for sales the game goes on sale like super regularly uh i bought dj max on sale myself you can get the packs on sale quite regularly as well. So I would wait for a sale if you're looking to spend money. Another rhythm game that goes for cheap super often is Muse Dash, which plays a little differently. It's not quite like a full button like DJ Max or Step Mania or Osu Mania. It plays slightly differently. I think it's two buttons, Muse Dash, but that goes for like like a buck so yeah. often. It goes for like one or two bucks. So again, another really cheap yeah. investment, but that is a lot of anime J-pop. Molly, how do you play these again. games? Are you are you using a keyboard recently or usually? Because uh, like yeah, yeah. these these games are like a lot about the inputs, right? Or like the yeah. hardware you might choose. I remember my partner, uh, she used to play Osu, but she would actually play with her drawing tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, I think with Osu specifically, I think the popular way, yeah, is like a tablet and a pen. You can use a mouse, but I think a lot of people prefer a tablet and a pen. I just mostly play I rhythm never games. Would have that thought like... People play them that way. That's why yeah. like, but it makes sense. Yeah. That's how they that's how they do it. I played Osu for a very brief period of time. I played it with a mouse because I don't have a drawing tablet because I can't draw. <laughs> I mean a lot of people I think they just buy like 30 buck tablets. I think that's how they mm -hmm. that's how they start. And then you might get some like crazy person that's got like a one thousand dollar wacom or something <laughs> like playing osu with a like a thousand osu on your cintiq yeah like osu, osu on your cintiq yeah like, fucking... <laughs> but i just pretty much play with a keyboard like anything you're comfy with and then if you're like super hobbyist super enthusiast which that is not the point of this podcast you know you have like uh home like home replicas of arcade controllers and some yeah. Some arcade games like Sound Voltex have an official PC version. Some, like I think Ongeki, have like clones, but they still have home 
like home version of the controllers that's if you're like super hobbyist at that point because yeah. those controllers are like 200 bucks 300 probably bucks. worth probably worth calling out too that there's clone hero which is the online sort there of is open... clone hero yeah which that, you that's can play the, that's with your... a guitar hero controller that's right yeah that's your pc guitar hero uh you know free version that's that people are still charting and adding new stuff to and i'll also call out i've heard that you know fortnite festival might be kind of lackluster as a as a rhythm game but it it is uh it has inspired epic to make new guitars um, yeah. and those and those are out there which is pretty cool uh i'm kind of just glad that those still exist um and i've heard that if you get the xbox one that also works on pc and PC. yeah mm -hmm. plugs right into existing rhythm games so that's pretty cool it nice. does yeah i totally forgot about clone hero oh my goodness thank you so much morgan yeah and that will work with i think quite a few of the old guitar hero guitars as long as they as long as like i think there's some wired ones that you can like plug straight into the pc some old ones i know the ps3 guitar hero guitars i think you can get like a because they worked off a dongle i think you can buy a dongle to make it compatible with pc there are like ways of getting your old guitar hero guitars that are like in the basement from 2009 there are ways of getting them working with pc as well if you're like That's oh awesome. my god it's been so long since i played guitar yeah. hero i really want to play it again play clone hero figure out how to get your guitar working with it and play clone hero for sure <laughs> I really quickly want to shout uh, cozy games and how to get into yeah. them because that's such like, you know, I have opinions about like whether that label is like useful or accurate, but people are using it. It's like, you know, as much a uh, game style as a lifestyle, I guess, or an approach <laughs> to games, but things that people call cozy games, like, like contrary to what you would believe the most like hardcore of cozy games, in my opinion, are the ones that take the most like self-direction and as you said morgan like making your own fun like yeah dwarf romantic has it has its own strategy component but like so townscaper or um tiny glade that's coming up things that want you to just build and like imagine um there are other things that aren't like building tools uh but like uh, cozy grove to a certain extent it has quests but i think you kind of have to make your own fun there to a certain extent so like those things I consider like the harder to get into, like the advanced cozy games are the ones that are like have the most open ended like freedom. And I think the best place to enter cozy game is actually things that are more adjacent to adventure games that have like a, like a more linear path, like instructions, like tell you what you should be doing. And that's like a way to get into like the vibe and then start branching out. Um, Tome, T-O-E-M is one that I loved a couple of years ago. That's this black and white, funny little isometric it's got little quests and you're taking pictures to do all of your quests it's like a sticker stamp rally type deal and that one has like the direction of giving you a quest giving you tasks to complete in each area but because it's like a photography game you have like okay how do you achieve that like how do you make it happen in the way that you want to how do you like compose a picture that you think is fun um and i've talked a lot about chance of sonar here too that's also very heavily like an oh, adventure game, game. It's so good. And it's like the puzzles are all language based. So I'd say like getting into cozy games go by way of like an adventure game that gives you quests that are really easy to parse or like a puzzle game as well, where you have a really clear goal. And then once you kind of like are in the space, like dabbling with games like that, then you go into like the townscapers, the, the tiny glades, the whatever that it's like, okay, take the tools, like <laughs> make your own fun, yeah. like good luck. Uh, and you feel like, think, yeah does have some distinctly uncozy moments though it, so. there are some tough puzzles in that there's and there's also there's some there's difficult. some like like sneaky and some chasey bits oh there's a couple timed segments yeah <laughs> there there are a couple you're right <laughs> but it's like 90 percent 95 percent cozy slow paced yeah. figuring stuff out <laughs> if, if, if i can call out a game that i don't think has it doesn't really fit the cozy aesthetic you know of uh -huh. bright colors you know, car cartoony or, or anything like that um but i just felt so cozy playing it because it is it is real take it at your pace is the talos principle 2 so that's like oh, sure, yeah that's a full-on puzzle game right? like the, the whole game is, is literally walking into different puzzle rooms and doing those puzzles uh but it's really really beautiful it's like set on these sort of like post post-apocalyptic 
earth environments where things have just like grown back and are beautiful you play as a as a gain of like really wholesome robots who just want to like discover things about the about the people that lived on earth before them yeah. um so yeah it, like, it kind of defies the cozy aesthetic right but it, but it really is a cozy game and the puzzles are really cool even if you only ever like get through the first couple worlds there's so many puzzles in that game uh that i've i've had a blast just picking at it here and there for for months cozy is the vibe it's the uh, puzzles are very cozy for sure yeah i, I feel like Cozy's almost every new puzzle game puzzle game people are like putting under the cozy label for yeah. sure because it it just has that that uh meditative quality to it yeah but yeah did i miss anything else that we want to hit and shout out before we go that's that's a lot of wrecks for just for genres to get into broaden bro- try something that you're uncomfy with maybe like try something try something that, new today yeah try something new when i was at university okay embarrassing fact i did specifically games journalism at university super embarrassing fact <laughs> um, how dare you use thing- your degree <laughs> i know right it's so cringe but one of the activities that we did was we got paired with someone and we like interviewed each other on our interests and then we recommended a game that like actively defied those mm-hmm. <laughs> um so and i remember i got given uh this war of mine which is a game that i would have never ever ever played like ever if that was of my own volition but the person that i was paired with said like oh i think like based on what you told me that you like but also like what you don't like i think you should try this it's like it was to recommend something out of our comfort zone sorry that was that was the specific task was to pair up and have them recommend something out of your comfort zone Mm -hmm. this war of mine was the one that was recommended to me and i played it and i really enjoyed it and that was a game that i never would have touched otherwise and i just think that like maybe sometimes going like oh this has aspects of something that i like but is is out of my comfort zone i think trying it anyway just trying new genres and seeing if you enjoy them it's like always so interesting to me so yeah try yes. it. <laughs> that's me about to play once human molly like my friends and my partner have been into it and i'm nice. like it's a crafting game it's got all these things i like but i don't really want to play the fps game but <laughs> I might be about to do it. You might so. like it. <laughs> Try it. You might yeah. like it. I'd I'd say like you know of everything we've been recommending, um, a lot of them are pretty cheap nowadays, especially if they're yeah. more than a few years old. Uh, so yeah, like For if sure. you're gonna pick one of these, pick the ones either like already on Game Pass if you already have Game Pass, um, or pick one that like regularly shows up for like ten dollars on Steam and start there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, thank you both for putting together some recommendations, having us us do a quick list of things for people to try. It's, it's a good exercise. Thank you, yeah, Morgan. Fun. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. And you can find all of us writing yeah, about promo. all these things on PCGamer.com. <laughs> uh, me and Morgan and Molly, all your usual news, reviews, guides, opinions, all that great stuff on the website. And as usual, you can talk with Molly and I about this week's episode at forums.pcgamer.com. Okay, now we can go. Well done. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.